How mental is boxing? I don't know, 95%, 5%, 10% physical, 95% mental. How so? Because I'm like we were explaining everything, our um, only purpose of our body is just to carry our brain, you know? That's really the only purpose, so the brain has to um, register the success factor in everything we do. What emotions would go through you as you're walking from the dressing room to the ring for a fight? I used to think um, it was being ferocious to tell people, I can't wait to get my hands on them, but it's really nothing but fear. I'm being embarrassed, being beaten, being knocked out. So as you're walking to the ring, you're thinking you're afraid, embarrassed? Yeah. Why do you think that was? Um, I don't know, that's just what it is. That's just how I deal with my pain and my pressure and everything, you know. But at the same time, I mean, you wanted to kill your opponents, essentially. You said you, that's what you would get yourself to think about yeah, going really into know. a fight, right? I really don't know, but really in all fights, I have to tell you that we're, we're prepared to do this, but this is like um, sleepwalking. Fighting is like sleepwalking. Guy just knows how to do it, you know. It just depends on what spirit he brings with him, but he knows how to do it. Even if he doesn't train, he knows how to do it. And um, I don't know, one thing I could ever say, I know out of, out of sounding tough, I always want to say I wanted to kill, I can't wait to get my hand, but I'm always scared to death. Always really scared. And that's what I can remember, that's all I can remember about fighting, about being afraid. I mean, that's a big part of fighting, is being afraid. Did being afraid help you in the fight? I would fight? say so, yeah, no doubt about that. But. Um, that's what fighting is. Um, a great deal of fighting has fear in it. Fear is a great, great asset and a great, um, I don't know, exponent, so to speak. Yeah, in the fight game. And in life in general, I think fear is a great exponent. And you tried to use fear to your advantage in another way, too. How would you try to intimidate your opponents? I don't know. It just happens. You know, you can't try to intimidate. Either he is or he's not. How would you know if the opponent is? Just, you just know, you feel, you know. Um, athletes, um, athletes are like, um, I don't know, they're like um, negotiators. Um, they just know it when they see it. From the experience and of doing it over and over for years and years, you just see it. You see it, you see it when you come in the room, you just know it, you smell it, you feel it. Then even the guys, when they can hide it, even guys that are professional and disciplined enough to hide it, you can see it right through them. How much emphasis would you put on speed? Speed kills. Speed kills, but um, it's determination and willpower that, um, that speed will have to succumb to. What does it feel like throwing a great punch. I don't know. I don't know what a great punch is. I don't know what it feels like. How do you know if you've landed one? I see the results of it, and people say that it was great, and I just go along with the flow, but necessarily I don't know if it's actually a great punch or not. What about a knockout punch? I think certain people get knocked out before they even enter the ring. Really? I don't know. Yeah, that's just the way it is sometimes. How about when you're on the reverse side of that and hit with a knockout punch? Um, you have to regroup some kind of way and come back, you know. Um, the main objective is not to get discouraged over life. I remember I used to look at all the great fighters that I looked up to and admired and stuff, old timers, there, and I look at the first three or four fights, two, you know, first year fighting, they got knocked out, cold, one round, three rounds, they got knocked out. The next thing you know, they didn't give up, they didn't get discouraged. Next thing you know, they're going in the Hall of Fame, the legendary champion. Never heard about the guys that knocked him out. Who was his name? Who is he? What did he do? After the fight, when he knocked him out, did he get his girlfriend pregnant, had to quit boxing? What happened? <laughs> you know, no, he gave up. He did, the guy didn't give up. When that punch is coming, the knockout punch, and it's being thrown at you, do you see it coming? Listen, um, I don't know. You're knocked out, you're knocked out, I guess. But you said it doesn't hurt, really, when well, you it don't hits. feel it, but, you know, of course, in, um, and... And why is that? I don't know, because you're out cold, you know? <laughs> you're unconscious, I guess. But um, I'm sure you're going to have a big headache when you wake up. But you just don't feel it.
And sometimes when you're boxing a guy, you get clock boom, and you're hurt. And you, you're not you're not hurt, but your legs are all over your head. But you're like, oh man, what happened? You're like it's very conscious what's going on, and you know you can't protect yourself. Your legs are all over the place. But you're like, oh man, he got me. You, you said before. I mean, even growing up, you wanted a lot of girls. That was the goal. But you abstained from sex for something like. Five years, was that true? Yeah, because I'm an idiot, you know? Um, I mean, so stupid. Um, it's, I, used to, I used to win by what people told me, you know? This is what you do, boxing's gonna mess you up, girls, boxing. Listen, I entered this, listen, I entered this profession a total brainless individual, you know? Looking for glory, because my, my self-esteem is so low, I'm looking for some <laughs> glory. Can you believe I'm 12 years old, I'm looking for some glory, because my life is just such a... Uh, waste. It's ridiculous. I did an episode with Joe Namath for oh. the series and spent time with him What's that this past like? fall. Oh. He's a fascinating guy and has great stories, oh, but man. something that I thought was kind of funny that Listen, we were talking. Listen, only won one championship, Joe. One championship. More famous than all these three times, one or four times, but that's the chemistry. That's the difference. That's what I'm talking about. These guys are great fighters, but you know, they get in a room with a guy that they could beat, they beat 20 times. This guy, they suck all the air out the room. It's his personality. Right. You know what I mean? Can't get the, can't he beat this guy? He just can't get the acclaim this guy got. You know, it's just, I was crazy. And something that he said, just which personality, was, human nature, people got it. Some people got it. Oh, man. Right. And what was kind of funny was we were actually talking about picking up ladies, and he's like, you know, back then when he was kind of in his prime, he would go to a club, go to a bar, and just sit down. And that was, that was the extent of the effort that he had to put in. How similarly easy was it for you? I guess, I don't know. Um, you see somebody you like on television, you, you find out how you get in touch with their agents, their managers, where do they work, or how do I go where they work with it, you know, and that's how you get in touch with them. You see somebody you like, it wasn't about meeting people back then. In the 80s, you see somebody you like on television, hey, who's that? Well, this is a, they're with this agency, hey, call them. Matter of fact, I know their sister or their brother, you know, everyone knows everybody in some, direct, indirect way, and that's how you meet people. And then of course you go outside and then people think you're special, you know, because you're on television and that's the idiot box. And when people see people in the idiot box, people lose their mind and turn into idiots over the people in the idiot box. So people see me and they think, um, they don't look at me and think I'm all used up or everything. And, um, and if they're smart, they run the other direction because I'm gonna mess your credit up. I'm gonna screwing everything up on you. You know, might mess around, give you a venereal disease, all kind of stuff. But you're just gonna keep on coming. All right, so come on, then. I'm a, I'm a, um, a sucker for pleasure too. But you know, if they were smart, they would just haul ass the other way. But they're not smart because they're they're um, addicted to the idiot box, which I'm on all the time. You know, so. I guess that's the way it is. I don't know what's going on here. This is just the way it appears to be. <laughs> For more clips from this interview, visit GrahamBensinger.com.